Hey there, Mr. Maes is here, and in this video, we're going to talk about interval of convergence. Now, we've talked about the ratio of convergence and find, I'm sorry, ratio, the radius of convergence. We talked about finding the radius of convergence when we're using a geometric series. And if you recall in the last unit, we start, when we started talking about series, we talked about the geometric series and we talked about a power series. And that the power series would converge if the x in that geometric series, um, let's say we had 1 over 1 minus x, right? If x was, the absolute value of x was less than 1 because this would be r. So we know that we can find the, uh, the, the radius of convergence or the interval. And actually, we talked about the interval of convergence, which is the interval for which values of x are going to make this geometric series converge. But the radius of convergence is actually how far away from the center it's going to converge to the end, or how far away from the center to the end point it's going to converge. If you kind of think about it, the middle here would be 0, to this would be 1, to this would be 1. The radius of convergence is 1, because it's how far it has to get for that interval. So. What we could do, though, is, you know, up until now, all we were able to do is deal with geometric series. Well, if we don't have a geometric series, then we might need to use something else to find the interval of convergence for a power series, and we can use the ratio test. We just covered the ratio test in the last section, so this is an application of the ratio, ratio test. We can find the interval of convergence and the radi radius of convergence. So let's take a look at how we're going to use the interval test, um, the interval test, the ra ratio test to find the interval of convergence and the ratio of convergence. So let's take a look at our first example here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to set up our limit in our ratio test, the limit as n approaches infinity. And remember, in the ratio test, it's 2n plus 1, x to the n plus 1. Over n plus. Now I know this is a power series because I have an x in it, and when I have an x inside this series, it's a power series, right? So times um, n over two to the n x to the n. Now, in order for this series to converge using the ratio test, this limit has to be less than one. Um, if it's greater than one, it's going to diverge. If it's equal to one, then we don't know what to do. So we can set this less than 1, we're going to go and simplify. And when we simplify, we're going to end up with the absolute value of, let's see, it's going to be 2x. Okay, this 2 is going to cancel with that, so we're going to have a 2 on top. This x to the n is going to cancel with the x to the n plus 1. And give me x times n over n plus 1. The limit as n approaches infinity. Okay, and if you don't know how I got that simplification, go look at the last video and take a look at how x to the n plus 1 equals really x to the n times x, and they simplify out. So now what's going to happen is this 2x here, guys, this, this absolute value of 2x is not really part of the limit because the limit is as n approaches infinity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that absolute value out of the limit. And I want this whole thing to be less than 1. Well, this limit right here is going to be equal to 1. So really what I have is the absolute value of 2x less than 1. What does that tell me? That tells me that 2x has got to be between 1 and negative 1. So if 2x is between 1 and negative 1, x has to be between 1 half and negative one half. So now we're gonna we're getting our radius or interval of convergence. So what we have to do is we have to check each endpoint because the endpoints might actually let us uh, converge. Like if we actually had x equals negative one half, will it converge or will it diverge? Because you know it might not necessarily be less than. I'll show you what I mean in just a second here. So we're going to go and check x equal negative one half. We've got to check the endpoints. So when I check x equals negative one half, I'm going to end up with 
plug I'm gonna plug that in here and that's gonna end up being um, 2 to the n times negative 1 half to the n over n which can simplify out to uh, the 2 to the n is going to be on the bottom. It's going to give me negative 1 to the n over n. And this looks like an alternating harmonic series, right? So this is an alternating harmonic series, which we know converges by the alternating harmonic series. So this alternating harmonic series converges, so that means this endpoint, negative one-half, actually is still in that interval of convergence. Let me go and check x equals positive one-half. Positive one-half is going to give me 1 over n. And we know 1 over n is not alternating. This diverges. This is a p-series, right? diverges it's a harmonic series so since this diverges x can't be equal to one half because it would diverge so my interval of convergence is going to be negative one half to one half inclusive and exclusive what's my radius of convergence well my radius of convergence is going to be you know what's in the middle here Zero, zero is right in the middle, and so how far is it to get to the endpoints? It's one half, all right? And we can find that, guys, but the radius of convergence can be found right here in this, in this part right here, all right? When you divide this by two, that's usually going to be your radius of convergence, usually. We'll take a look at the next example. Okay, for some, for, some, <laughs> for number two, we have a different situation. Now, in general, when you see an n here and an n here, these powers are the same right there, right? So what we're going to do is uh, I'm gonna actually going to change this to n equals 0 to infinity, x plus 1 over 2 to the n. Now, since I have it all to the n power, this is actually a geometric series test, right? Where the r is x plus 1 over 2. So the r needs to be absolute value less than 1 by the GST. So I'm going to have x plus 1 less than 2, but greater than negative 2. So x is less than 1, but greater than negative 3. <clears throat> okay, so what is the uh, if we put negative 3 in here, we're going to get, if we put negative 3, check x equals negative 3, we're going to get, um, oh, those, these aren't going to work, right? Because they're just going to give me negative 1. Okay, so uh, this is the interval of convergence right here. All right, that's the interval of convergence. The radius of convergence. is what is it it is two and again we found that we can find it right here it's two okay let's go to the next one here so that was one where we actually had to use the geometric series test not the ratio test so let's get back to the ratio test n factorial x to the n oh n factorial x to the n we know we're probably going to use the ratio test anyway that's what we would normally use in some tricky situation like this so we're going to have limit as n approaches infinity, x, oops, n plus 1 factorial x to the n plus 1 divided by n factorial x to the n. And we want that to be less than 1. So this is going to get rid of this one there. And... This is going to get rid of that one there. We're going to have the limit as n approaches infinity of n plus 1 times x. And we would like that to be less than 1. So here's the problem, guys. Uh, if we plug in infinity in here, we're going to get infinity. Remember that the first one here, when we plugged in infinity, 
you know, we could take out, we could take out the 2x, right? We could take out this 2x here, and we would be able to um, say that this, oh, this is 1. But we can't do that in this case because this is not going to be end up canceling out or anything. So this is only going to happen, only true, if x equals 0. That's the only way because we're going to x equals 0. That's just going to cancel everything right away before we can even do the limit. So our interval of convergence is x equals 0. And our radius of convergence, what's our radius? How far from the center zero is our endpoints? It's zero, so the radius is zero. Kind of weird there, but hey, it happens. Let's take a look at this last example here. And you know what? I'm feeling fun. Let's see if I could use, can I use a different color? Oh man, I wanted to use purple. Oh, let's use purple. Where's purple? There's purple, okay. So we're going to use the ratio test and approach is infinity. Absolute value. Uh, now the absolute value, what's that going to do to this? Bah, goes away. No more, no more negatives, right? Absolute value, no more negatives. So it's just going to be x to the 2n plus 2. And, and if you don't know how I got that, I put plus 1 like that in here. And then that's going to be 2n plus 2, okay? Over 2n plus 2 factorial times 2n factorial over x to the 2n. All right, so stuff's going to cancel out. I'm going to end up with the limit as n approaches infinity. Uh, this is going to cancel out with that. Leave me with x squared on top. 2n plus 2 is going to be 2n plus 2, 2n plus 1, and then 2n factorial. Boom, boom. So I'm left with that on the bottom. And I want that to be less than 1. Well, here's the thing. When I plug in infinity, what's going to happen? It's all going to go to 0. So this limit right here is equal to 0, regardless of what x is going to be. That's always less than 1. So in this case, what's the interval of convergence? Negative infinity to positive infinity. What's the radius of convergence? This is a big radius, guys. This is the biggest radius. Infinity, it's, it's huge. It's the biggest radius there is. All right, so there's some examples of using the ratio test to find the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence. Here we did the GST. Oops. Okay, I'll use a different color here. Here we did the GST to find the interval and radius. And here we use the ratio test to find the interval, the interval and radius. Okay. So these are these are really two that you're gonna probably see on the AP exam. And these are ones that you know could happen. Um, you should be aware if that limit ends up to be that way, that that's what those radiuses, those radii and intervals look like. All right. We'll catch you next time, folks. See you later. Bye.